All right, well, I want to thank you guys for attending. We are going to be going over the what's new in X6. Uh, I'm Chris Gozell. I'll be uh, walking you guys through the presentation today. So let's get started. Um, just for you guys to know, hopefully you can all hear me very well. Uh, if you can't hear me, then you're probably having speaker problems. You can go and hopefully see the screen here and see you can call in. Um, your lines are muted, so if you guys uh, try to talk into the microphone, I'm not going to be able to hear you. So if everyone could just uh, hit the little hand symbol, uh, let me know that you can hear me okay. Just hit that little hand symbol there just to make sure that, you know, Everyone can hear me? Raise your hand. Can we get everybody Matt? All right, I'm going to have Matt put your hands down. Um, if you guys do have any questions, you know, during the webinar, uh, you guys can go ahead and type your questions in. Uh, Matt and Todd will be uh, answering your question. Dave is MIA right now. <laughs> he should be here in a little while. Uh, any questions that we don't get? We will email you guys back. We will get back to you. So if you don't get your question answered right away, I will uh, have a copy of this, and I'll be able to answer you guys back, or one of us will. Uh, the other good thing, too, is if you guys want to go and watch us again, you can always go and download it. This will be up on our website later on today. I'll post it up there, or Matt will. You know, just to let you know who we are, um, you guys should all know this. Jeff Hankson, he's our president. I'm the sales manager. It's me. Todd Rathkamp, he handles Wisconsin sales. Matt handles all our inside sales here. Dave Fonda is another sales guy we have here. Tech support, we've got Norbert doing posts. Dave Miller, he's our apps specialist. Evan, another apps guy. Scott handles most of our training. And then Kim handles codes. Uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, you guys can. We do have a 888 number, toll-free number. You guys can call us. Or you can just dial the 847-428-4350. You can also email sales at Shopware Inc. Uh, for any sales related. Or you can go ahead and email tech with any tech related. Don't forget to visit our website. We're always updating new and improved things up there. Helps, videos, downloads. You can always go to our website at shopwareinc.com. Some of the products I just want to kind of talk about, um, I kind of threw this slide in here just to kind of introduce you guys to some of the different products that we do have. Uh, we do offer a two different products, basically, one that runs inside of SolidWorks and one that doesn't. That's our traditional standalone. Uh, we offer multi-axis. One of our new things we're coming out with, which is an add-on, uh, it's separate. You don't get it with multi-axis is our port expert. I'm going to talk a little bit about that along with blade expert. We also offer a, a lathe product, a router product, a wire, and then coming later this year, uh, we've been talking about this, is our Swiss product. Another product that we carry, too, is our Master 3D gauge. This actually is an add-on inside of MasterCam. It runs directly inside of MasterCam. This allows you to be able to rapidly inspect your parts, do reporting, first article inspection, reverse engineering. It's a turnkey system that you can pretty much go ahead and hook up. Runs right inside a MasterCam. So if you're used to using a MasterCam, it provides you with real lifetime feedback of doing inspection, design, reverse engineering. Another add-on product we have is Robot Master. Robot Master integrates right inside a MasterCam. You'd be able to go and program any of the mainstream robotic arms. This would support you know, trimming, 3D machining, deburring, polishing, dispensing, grinding, welding, and more. What's also nice is the fact that you can also have a direct add-in into the wire path. Or, uh, sorry, not wire, weld path. Simcoe integration, basically Simcoe integration, you guys have probably already heard that term. Uh, they offer an editor that you guys run for free right inside a master cam. They also have one that's what I call an editor that's on steroids. It's our uh, DNC Max. This allows you to go ahead and control in a controlled environment to be able to send programs out to multiple CNC machines. What's also new that we just came out with with the Simcoe is a PDM manager. Basically what this allows you to do is be able to control all your CAD CAM files from one menu. Images, 
anything you want. You can see on my screen that I just popped up. You can have all your NC programs, your CAD files, setup sheets, all that, all controlled. It's a PDM for CAD CAM. If you want any more information on any of these products, uh, feel free to email sales and we can get you that information. So going over what's new in MasterCAM, I got a ton of things to cover today. You know, here's just some of the things, the 64-bit support, the uh, improved tool path support, stock model, file transfer. There's a bunch of different things that I'm going to be talking about today, kind of going through some of this stuff. I'm going to go into more detail on some of these things. Um, we are kind of limited on time, but if you do want more information about this, you can go directly to our website. Let me kind of pull this up here really quick. Should only take a second. There we go. Underneath the uh, help, if you go underneath our main menu, underneath support, install, help, you're going to pull up this. Basically here, you have a download of what's new. You can download and see what's new inside of MasterCam. You can also go and download the actual X6 itself. And then what's even more important, anybody that's going from X5 to X6, make sure you download and read this. This is a PDF document, right, PDF map? It's a PDF document that will walk you through on how to go and get all your files transferred from X5 to X6. If you don't have X5 installed, you're not importing any of those files, don't worry about it. You can just install the X6. So going through some of the general enhancements, I'm going to talk about the general enhancements, which is our 64-bit support, stock model, our new uh, tool manager, and some of the other different design enhancements that we have. With the release of X6, we now have better 64-bit support. Basically, what this allows you to do is on 32-bit systems, we can support up to 4 gig of RAM. On 64, it is unlimited. Basically, your master cam will run much, much faster. You'll get faster calculation times. Stock model uh, was introduced in X6 too. Basically, what this allows you to be able to do is to dynamically be able to see your stock based on operations without having to go into verify. You can see up in the upper right-hand corner of my screen, this is what it would look like if it was just machine. Another preview window will show it what it's, it's halfway machine. This allows you to do this or be able to compare it to an STL without having to go into the verify. Stock model, it's a separate entity inside the operations manager. You can see it right here. It's its own operation. It's fully associative to any of the other operations you have in here. And it's also uh, uses the multi-thread. So as it processes, you continue to work in MasterCam. So what I'll do is I'll jump into MasterCam really quick just to show you guys what it's going to look like and how it behaves. Bring up the MasterCam for you here in a second. It takes a second to launch up. So right now I'm going to go ahead and just isolate just the one toolpath. So here's my one toolpath that you guys can see on my screen. I'll turn on my shading. You can see my part, you can see my toolpath. What I want to do is I want to know what this part's going to look like once I machine this. Here is your stock model. This is what the part will machine. You can see all I have to do is just select it. And by selecting this button here, it only displays my selected toolpaths. Underneath the parameters, which I'll go through in more detail in a minute here, you can see here I can define my stock operation, what's my source, which was my first toolpath, and then I have the option to run a compare if I really want to, comparing to the original model if I'd like. Here I have another toolpath where I just basically come in, I've done the outside, and now I want to do this first space here. If I want to see what it looks like after that, you can see I've grabbed the other operation, and now I can see what stock I have left over. Same thing with this operation. You can see I'm picking out the pockets now. What will this model look like when it's all done? This saves me the time of having to go into the verify mode. Uh, 
outside of there. Another new thing that's in with the X6 is the new database for tool management. You can see now we have an updated graphics. This is an ongoing process. Basically what we've incorporated in here, it's currently still underway, but we can get better images. We get a, uh, the capability of being able to do a preview zoom of your tool, and also a tapered selection for lollipop cutters. That's in there now too. These are just some of the different design enhancements. I'm not going to go through all these. When we do our rollouts, I will go into more detail, you know, about being able to go and, you know, trim a solid to a surface, masking, X-form, quick mask, and some of the other different things. Some of the 2D mill enhancements that you guys are mill level one guys, or if you have mill level two or three, this all applies to this. The stock model, which I just approached or just talked about, the HST, the bull nose, region chain I'm going to go into, dynamic, coolant, blend options, and smooth contouring. So let's just first take a look at what happens with the 2D HST support. One of the things that a lot of people were asking for was the ability to be able to influence where the tool would approach our material. We now have the capability to go ahead and do that. So what you're going to find is when you're inside any of the tool paths here, HST tool pass underneath your cut parameters, you're going to have the option to be able to go and get it from the bottom left, center, right, top, mid, whatever what you want, all control break from here. So actually what's really nice is there's a video that I can show you guys really quick. I'll pull this up for you. I don't know if you guys can hear that really well. Let's see if this does a little louder. X6 allows you to influence a little better. Tool approaches from outside material. Well, you guys kind of saw that video. What I want to show you guys too is if you go and download that file that I showed you guys that was on our website, you're going to pull up this dialog box that has all these really nice help videos in there. If you go into the system, it's going to talk about all these different videos. Like if you go into any 64, 64 bit support, it will give you different things on what's going on inside of Mastercam, general, stock model, chaining. There's all sorts of different videos in here that you guys can play. This is in that download off of our website that you can take. Bunch of good videos in here. Another thing that's nice is we now support Bullnose tool inside our HST and dynamic tool pass. The other thing that's nice is we also make sure that we don't get these cuffs. So Mastercam will look at it and make sure that there's no cuffs less on the floor with that Bullnose flat diameter. Once again, I can show you guys the file here. Yeah, it's going to be hard for you guys to hear this. Full bull nose support ensures no cusps are left on the floor due to the size of the bull nose flat diameter. I'll jump back into this later, but you guys can see some of these videos if we, once you download it. These are all available to you. One of the things I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about is region chaining. Region chaining before um, you didn't have this option. Basically, any of the HST tool pass, you had to go and just chain it one way. You couldn't say what's avoiding, where our entry chain is. It was just one way. You could only go and cut one particular area at a time. You had to break it up into separate operations in X5. X6, you can have multiple pockets. Like before, you could only do one pocket per tool path. Now you can do multiple pockets. And also, you can call up what's your avoidance area. So if you've got a clamp, you can just chain the clamp. If you've got an area you just want to avoid, you can avoid that area. Works very, very nice. Once again, there is a video app, and I'm not going to even bother to play it because you can't hear it. I'd rather just show you guys. So let me jump into Mastercam here for a minute.
let MasterCam pull up. I'm using dual screen, so I'll have to kind of jump around a little here. So here, you know, basically what we had before was our old chaining way. Basically, you could only do one pocket at a time. If you pulled up your region, you only could do one area. Um, now you have the ability to be able to call it out, and I'll kind of show you guys how it works. So if I drag this down here, let's go into tool paths, let's go into our high speed, and let's do a basically a dynamic core, because I want to start from the outside, work my way in. So dynamic core, I can pull up, and you're going to see, I'm going to pull up my chaining box that looks like this. Let's go ahead and turn on our solids just so I can see my part a little easier. Let's go into solids and let's utilize our face. So what's nice here is on the start, you just pick what area you want to cut. I want to cut this area right here. That's the area I'm going to cut. I'm picking off the solid. I hit OK. Next, what it's going to do is bring up my regional chaining. So right now, this is the area I want to machine. I can now pick my avoidance areas. My avoidance areas, once again, are going to be from the solid. I'm going to pick this space. I want to avoid this space, this space, and this space. I'm going to hit OK, I'm going to hit OK, I'm going to hit OK. Let it generate the toolpath. Here's my toolpath that I generated, and this is what you're going to see. You can see it did not cut this area, did not cut this area, did not cut this area, but it did cut this area, and I get a nice overhang. Once, uh, again, once before in X6 or X5, you had to go and break these up into separate operations, I believe what it would do is the smaller areas, it would go and avoid bigger areas, it would machine. Now you can call up those avoidance areas, and this is good with any of the HST tool paths. So let me close out of this. The other thing that's nice now, too, is the ability to be able to call out a variable radius. Before, you did not have the ability to be able to do a variable radius. And you could fit in tight areas like you see on my screen here. We would have to go in there and just basically do a rest machine on there. Well, now we can go ahead and tell MasterCam that, hey, our target size is going to be 45% of our tool diameter. Our reduced size, we'll let it come down to a, a value that we can specify. That way we can be more efficient as we machine. So as you can see, this is where that minimum tool path radius is. So here's our step over. Our target's going to be 25%, but we can go down as low as 10%. And this is the result you're going to get here. So if we take a look at that, let MasterCam pull up. Slide me over there. So basically what you're going to see here is I'm going to tell MasterCam to only show my highlighted one. So this is what you would get before. You can see it couldn't fit in those areas because of the arc that I had called out. With the new variable radius, you can see I can machine all in those areas now. And that's just called out underneath your cut parameters, minimum toolpath radius. If you don't want it to go in those areas, leave it at 35% and you will get a toolpath that looks more like this or like this, or more like this, if I choose the right toolpath. This is what you would get. Another thing that's really nice inside of there is we can now do a dynamic zigzag. What this allows MasterCam to do is both climb cut and conventional in materials that are, allow us to do that. Basically, this is increased productivity. See if how this works. Mastercam X6 also introduces zigzag motion. So you can see it's cutting back and forth, being more efficient. Climb cut to conventional. Climb to conventional. So if I pull up that file for you, we'll take a quick look at it. Slide master cam over. Let's only look at that one toolpath. So here was that old way of doing it, the X5 way. 
Now I can do it with a zigzag pattern. And if I back plot this, I enter into the part, spirals its way out. Now you can see it's channeling through there, being more efficient, climb cut, and conventional as it's going through there. Reduce cycle time, but it's only good for materials that I can go and climb and conventional. But you have the control inside of here. Another thing that's nice too is now you can see whether or not you've got coolant turned on right in your ops manager. Is coolant on? Is coolant off? So if it is on and you want it off, you can see it. What else is nice too is the fact that our blend tool pass now we offer compensation. Basically before you always had to comp off of one of them, adjust your line over. Now you have the ability to be able to go and uh, specify your comp direction. So like if I wanted to go and call up saying that, hey, basically this is my line, this is my other uh, blend line, we can comp to the right of this line, but also it comps out here too if I get a nice overhang on my material. It will approach and start comping in there. Before I had to go and actually physically offset each one of these lines based on my tool radius size. And we also look at stock to leave on walls and floor. I'm not going to go into this. I'm going to keep moving on. We've got a lot of stuff to go through. So if you guys want, once again, I'll go through this more in our rollouts, showing you guys more of the files and how they work. Another one that's nice, too, is the PL mill. Basically, underneath your lead-in and lead-out parameters, you can adjust the start and end of the contours. This, you can see, it's only going to the end of each one of the contour chains that I picked. I can now tell it, hey, I want to adjust the start and I want to adjust the end and MasterCam will automatically go and adjust out further. It's a nice extension without having to modify the geometry. Another nice enhancement they made inside the 2D stuff is being able to go ahead and specify in, uh, internal corner radiuses. You can now specify out that I want to roll all edges by 200 thousandths. So here you can see I'm rounding the outer corners, but what about the internal? I'm getting a sharp corner. Tool comes in, pinches into the corner, pinches into the corner. Now with that turned on, I can now have a nice radius rolling all the way around, nice and smooth. Once again, I'm not going to bother to show that it's pretty straightforward. So let's talk about some of the 3D enhancements that are inside of MasterCam. I already talked about what we can do with the new stock model. Works the same way in 2D, 3D, 5-axis, where I can have the uh, stock model out in my operation. Like I just said, it does support two to five axis, multiple tool planes. This also streamlines the use of being able to not have to go into verify on each different operation. And you can see it, and also you can go ahead and do a um, compare between your original or your what you just machined to see the leftover areas. As you can see here. Rust machining, you can actually see how much stock you have left over even after rust machining. You can do single operations or multiple operations. So if we go and take a quick look at this, bless you. So let me go ahead and pull up Mastercam here just to show you on a 3D part. I'll tell you what, guys, this is something that has been really nice to have inside of there. I did a job not too long ago uh, for a customer. Being able to go ahead and see your tool path here, if I just show this tool path here, what's this part going to look like once I go and run it you know, through here? I don't have to go into verify. I can actually see it on my screen. Notice just by clicking on it, I can see what areas I have left over material at. This is where I do a rest machine. Then I come in there and I do my contour on the outside. What's my model going to look like? It's all controlled right inside of here by just the click of the button. Instead of having to go in to verify, it saves time and energy. And all I'm really doing is just calling up inside my parameters what operations I'm pulling and what my stock was originally coming from. What also is a new enhancement inside of the X6 is the ability to be able to do OptiRest. OptiRest basically gives you a nice smooth toolpath motion, con nice smooth toolpath motion with constant engagement if I slow down when I talk. As you can see here, we can take a stock model 
let's say I just turn the outside of it, and I can be more efficient on how I toolpath when I'm only going and cutting the areas where I have stock. We can do previous operations, the original casting, whatever what you want. You can use an STL. You get nice, smooth, uh, dynamic motion with a rest mill operation. Saves time, no cutting or no air cutting. Allows for faster removal. I do have a nice video here I can show you. So here you can see it cutting. This is on a hot machine. Notice the nice smooth toolpath motion. Hopefully I'm not blasting your guys' ear out with my disco music. Flips it aside. Notice that MasterCam knows where the stock is at, so it's just going to cut those areas. It's not going to machine a whole bunch of air. Knows when to use helical entry. Winging steel wall, or no uh, steel wall, those are man chips. So we'll take a quick peek and look at this. There's a couple things I want to show you just on how, with the stock model, how that works, how it's called up. So let me pull up Mastercam here really quick. Mastercam's almost up. Let me pull it over to here, expand it. We only want to look at the operations that I choose. We'll turn on shading. So here's my original stock model. So all I had to do was come into here and say, hey, this is going to be my initial stock model, and I'm pulling actually from a model that I picked on. I can put it on a different layer, but this is what it's going to look like. And there's no sources picked yet because I haven't done anything. I just want to show it just as my model. Then I go into my OptiRest, and then I can toolpad based on that. Underneath the OptiRest, you have the ability to be able to call out exactly what other operation, which is my stock model, I'm going to be toolpathing from. This gives me a much more efficient toolpath and only cutting the areas where I have stock. So there's that operation. That's what it's going to look like when it's uh, done with that operation right above it. Then I want to machine on the bottom half. That's what it will look like when I machine the bottom and the top. Then I machine on the front side. That's what the model will look like. I machine on the back side. And this is what my model will look like when it's all said and done. But you see how fast I can click through these and be able to see exactly where I've machined at, what my part's going to physically look like. Before, I used to have to go over and reprocess all my operations. Now, since this is all in real time and everything's associative, it gets updated automatically. Much more efficient. They also did some work on the hybrid finishing. If you already don't know what the hybrid does for you, basically it used to go and allow you to combine two different operations, which are my two favorite operations. It combined the scallop, and it also combined the uh, waterline cut or uh, finished contour. So what this does for you is it eliminates the need to have to have two operations. The X5 hybrid, one of the things that I didn't like about it is in areas you can see here, I had a lot of area of where I did the scallop. Okay, you know the surface wasn't bad, but it wasn't ideal. Now with the hybrid, what it does is it gives you a better finish by condensing and breaking that scallop into smaller tool paths. Another thing that it will allow you to do is not only combining the operations for scallop and for waterline, but we now offer the raster. As you can see here, I'm getting more of a raster cut. I always climb cutting the tool will pull up, come back down, pull up, come back down, give me a really nice finish on these flat areas. If you guys are doing 3D milling and haven't used the hybrid, I highly encourage you to check it out. It is really nice. And once again, there are good help files on it. So if you go and watch the help videos, it will step you through that process. 
If not, shoot an email off to tech support. One of those guys can help you. So let's take a look at a couple of different operations here really quickly. Let's just show, oops. Let's just look at one operation. So here you can see this is the old way. I would have to do waterline and then I would have to do the scallop, right? Well, now with the hybrid, it combines both of those. But you can see here I'm getting a pretty large scallop area. It's going around and around, working its way around. Now, if I go into there, I can tell it to actually give me those raster cuts too. Now you can see the toolpath motion here. Spirals its way down, comes down the wall. Now I start getting those raster cuts. There's another one where I can keep the tool down a little bit more efficiently. If I didn't want to have the tool pick up, I can keep that tool down. And you can see the tool does not retract back up. It stays down on the part, running its way around. All right. So that's some of the basic stuff that was in the 3D side. Not all of it, but some of the basics. I just kind of wanted to get your, you know, show you guys what some of the new stuff is. Now what I want to do is go into a little bit about the lathe. I'm not going to go into great deal, great detail on that, but I'd like to show you some of the new stuff in X6 lathe. One of the things that they've added in there is the ability to be able to, in roughing, vary your depth. Um, before you used to basically just have one pass, same depth all the time, or multiple passes at the same depth, okay? Basically, it was always cutting with the same area of your tool, so you would always wear out in the insert in the same spot. Now what we can do is start varying our depth cuts and even get this. And we can even use diamond-shaped inserts with this, too. All I'm doing is varying my depth by a percentage as I work my way down. So underneath your rough uh, parameters, you can see I can vary my depth by a percentage right here. That's where that's controlled at. Once again, I'm not going to go into it. It's pretty basic on how it works. I want to keep moving on and show you guys more stuff. But if you'd like to get more information about it, you can always watch the video or email us. Another one that's really, really nice um, is this up-down cut strategy for finishing. Basically what MasterCam now allows you to do is come in, hit all the uh, flat areas, the uh, ID, and then come back and hit all the walls. What I'm going to do here is just pop back into the one video. Of course I closed it. Never mind. I'll keep moving on. There's a video on the download of what's new that shows you where it comes in. It cuts all the flat areas and then it hits all your wall areas. Another enhancement inside of MasterCam is being able to go and combine a series of operations to be able to go and do cutoff, pickoff with the miscellaneous ops. And you can do a bar pull, stock transfer. What it does is it basically takes a series of operations and creates them for you, a series of events. So instead of you having to do all these events, MasterCam will handle it for you automatically. So let's take a quick look at what this looks like. Let me pull up MasterCam here. All right. Got MasterCam open. So basically, I have an operation here where I come in, I do my face, I do my rough, I do my finish, and then I've got this pickoff routine. See all these operations here? This was created all with one basic operation this series of events. So if you guys go into your tool paths here and you go into miscellaneous ops and you go into your pick off, pull, and cut off, it will pull up the menu item that will say, okay, where's the stock coming from? And then you get this menu. So now you can either do just a uh, pick off, bar pull, cut off. You can do a cut off, pick off, cut off. You can just do a pick off or you can just do a bar pull. And it will create those series of events coming out. You can see the operations that it will create with each different one. You can see it goes and changes as I go. But it creates all these operations for you and streamline it for one menu operation, which is nice. And notice as you pick here, 
thing, different things will light up based on what you're doing. See how some things shaded off? Because I'm just doing a pick off. Makes things much more streamlined and easier. Some of the other things I'm not going to go into great detail about, but I want to talk a little bit about it inside a lathe. They've added the ability inside of uh, can roughing and finishing improvements, clearance, uh, support for going in uh, type 1, type 2 can cycles, clearance values, those are all added in there, along with the ability to be able to go and uh, optionally have speeds and feeds for doing can groove and facing. You can now have different plunge rates, different feed rates. Another thing that's kind of nice is the fact that in an XX lathe, you can go and have corner break on your face contours or corners when you're facing. Another thing that's nice, like I said before, in your groove toolpaths, you can have your first plunge rate, a different feed rate, and retract. Underneath the grooving side, we also support undercuts now too, so you can get in there and do your undercuts. Another thing is being able to, on the roughing, being able to go ahead and have it look at remaining stock and only machine those areas that will minimize my air cuts because it's going to be looking at that remaining stock. Also, C-axis contour face drill support for plane rotation. That's also added in there. So moving on, what I want to do is talk about some of the different enhancements in the multi-axis, getting into blade expert, and getting into port expert. I'm going to talk briefly about those different things. So one of the things they added in the five axis is being able to trim your stock or trim the toolpath to the stock. And just to give you a quick example of that, let me pull up Mastercam. Get me pulls, dude. So while this just pulled up, Matt's going to do a quick pull. So Matt's going to pull up what version of Mastercam are you currently running? Please answer. So once you guys answer, we'll close this poll off. We're just trying to get some feedback on you know which version you guys are running and what we can do better. Okay, Matt's going to close that poll off. So I opened up the file here. So basically, if I go into a side view here, you can see here's my tool path that I have right here. This is the cut. So if I back plot this, we go into my settings here, and I want to make sure that I've got that turned off and uh, tool change. Let's change that. So if we take a look at this here, you can see my tool path, what it's doing. See the air cut here as it comes down through a multiple steps. So what I'm going to do here is exit out of my back plot really quick, and I'm going to take this operation, let's just do a quick copy after. All I did is copy that operation down, and let's go ahead and tell Mastercam we're going to trim stock to my initial stock. I'm going to hit OK here. I'm going to click on Regenerate, not worry about where I hit here. And what I want to show you is, remember, before, if I did a back plot, let's take both of these operations and back plot them. So basically, here's my first operation, right? You can see the air cut it as it comes up into here. There it is. My second operation, let me just change something really here, quick here. On my second operation, you can see it's a lot more efficient. Now it just comes down just in the areas just outside the stock. So if I was just a back plot, just one operation here, you'd see it a little bit clearer. as I come through. Close off Mastercam here. Support for uh, lollipop cutters. We support the tapered walls now, where Mastercam will read where our tapered walls are at in the multi-axis. And now I want to talk a little bit about Port Expert. Port Expert is for 
people that need to be able to go and get down into a tube shaped part. It's a separate add-on. It runs with inside the Mill 3 or Router Pro. Multi-axis is not needed in order to run port export. It's not included with it. It's an add-on up and beyond multi-axis. But you don't need to have multi-axis to get to port export. Parts can be programmed faster. Half hour is usually typical, you know, time what it takes, you know, the old or the new way. But what this basically does is being able to go and program your parts faster, smoother toolpath motion, more forgiving on bad surfaces too. This is its own custom app. You'll see in the multi-axis interface, as you can see from my screen. Basically, what you're seeing um, is the cut pattern. Basically, all you have to do is pick your machine surfaces, offset. You can have the spline, your pattern, whether it's roughing or finishing, and then your output type. As you can see here, we've got kind of short little uh, demonstrations on how it works. I was going to open the file up, but I'm going to hold off for right now just to kind of keep things moving along here because I'm starting to run on, uh, short on time. You know, basically there's three operations that I had in here that's roughing, finishing, finishing with an auto spline. This just makes things a lot easier if you're doing any kind of port or tube shaped parts. I will show you some of the simulation because that is pretty cool. So let me throw up a simulation really quick here. Let's run this. Let it open up here really quick. Let me slide this over on the screen you guys can see here. So basically, if I zoom in on it, let's throw this up here, let's play it. You can see as this machine is way down here. Then it starts going into five axis. Notice it didn't go five axis until it needed to. It will stay straight three axis until it needs to get into five axis and then starts machining its way down. And this is the machine sim that comes standard inside a Mastercam. You get 16 machines that are occluded with it. So let me bounce out of here. Here's another demonstration showing the cut process that you can do this without ever leaving your desk. This is on a Haas. I'll fire this one off really quick for you. should fire up here in a second, transfer it over for you guys can see it on your screen. Once again, three axis cutting. Once it gets down, then it will convert back to five. That's one of the benefits of the Ford Expert. Now it's getting into five. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Blade Expert. I'm going to kind of, you know, briefly touch on this. Blade Expert, once again, it's a new product. It's a separate add-on. Uh, once again, you don't have to have multi-axis. You can just go with Blade. Basically, this really streamlines and simplifies being able to go and cut uh, impeller blades. We've touched, you know, aerospace, automotive, marine, gas, oil, you name it. So if you're cutting any kind of blades, you might want to look at this as an add-on. This will run inside of uh, Mastercam for SolidWorks, Mill 3, or Router Pro, but you do need the 3D version in order to add this on. A lot of times what you end up working with is the hub surface, the blade surface, the leading edge, the trailing edge, your fillets, your splitter if applicable, and then your shroud surface. Those are the areas that are always you know, come into play when you're doing blades. It is a custom app. It allows roughing between the blades, semi-finishing, finishing the blades, and then the floor finish. I can't remember if I put a video there or not. But I will show you. Ah, here we go. I got a real nice video here. So this is the highs at CNC. 
corporate. Here's the video. So as you can see, it's roughing this out. It's not too loud, is it? See the lead lag in there. And you guys can, you know, watch these. These are all up on YouTube. You can get access to them from our website. But pretty slick. There it is doing the finishing. You can see that it's machined on it looks like the interrupted blade. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys the simulation because you just saw it as it cuts, but it is pretty slick. I will show you on this one. This one's pretty cool for doing more of a, a flat blade. I'll pull this one up really quick. I'll slide this one over for you guys can see it. Spin around, zoom in. You can see it's just cutting. This is the same simulation that's installed with X6. You guys have this if you have X6 installed, and I think you even have it if you have uh, X5 installed. You can see it actually doing a simulation for you as it's cutting. The simulation really becomes key when you do four axis or five axis. That's when you really want to start using the simulation. This is just some of the checklists that you can go through, you know, what version of master cam you own because you have to be current, you know, how many blade jobs you do within a year. Um, you know, does your machine support full five axis? Is just four axis? And is this the only kind of parts you generally cut our blades? So I just want to lightly touch on the master cam for SolidWorks because of the fact that I'm going to go so light on it is because we already kind of went through all the stuff. So all the stuff you guys saw in Mill 2D, Mill 3D, and the five axis are also in the master cam for SolidWorks product. So I don't want to be redundant on this, you know. We do have the stock model. You can save uh, back plotted geometry. You do have machine, machine simulation with the master cam for SolidWorks, which is nice. The regional chaining, all that's in there. Being able to go and copy operations from one configuration to the next, importing in the MC9 files, MCX files. The multi-axis stuff is in there. Um, you can add on curved drill 5 axis to a 2D seat, just like you can in the standalone. That's in there. Port expert and blade expert can be added on to that too, but you do need the full 3D version. Matt, you got any other polls you want to run? All right, Matt's going to run a quick uh, couple of polls here on stuff. So Matt's going to launch a poll asking what topics you guys were most interested on in some of the stuff that I won through. This is, uh, if you guys answer it, you know, I'll be able to get more information about giving you guys better bang for your buck as far as what information I send out to you, what webinars I might do. So as soon as you guys answer it, Matt's going to close that poll. Bless you.
Matt's going to launch another poll on how we can better serve you guys with MasterCam or any of our other products. And then I'm going to hit your questions next. There are wire enhancements. I just didn't have time to go through them all. Um, once again, if you guys download that What's New or come to our rollouts that we're going to be doing in a month or so, uh, we're just starting to get our X6 boxes in, and we're going to start trickle feeding those out to you guys, or you can grab them from our rollouts that we're going to do. And I'll go into some of the enhancements with the wire at the rollouts. I just kind of ran it short on time today. Similar. They do work a little bit different. So a question was asked whether or not the stock model will work the same way in mill as it does in lathe. Very similar, but they are two different things. If you guys have more questions, feel free to send them to me. Uh, we're going to stay on the line here for probably another few more minutes uh, on any other questions. If not, I do appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, we will post this up on the website later on, uh, possibly today, if not first thing tomorrow. That way, if you guys want to review any of this stuff, you're more than welcome to. Uh, somebody asked whether or not uh, we're going to send the Xbox X6 boxes out. We will. Um, if you want to get it today, you can just download it off our website. Any other questions? Uh, somebody asked about the X6 demo. They are working on that right now. The student copy it should be available next month, from what Matt just told me. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to close out of here. Um, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to email us at tech at shoplink.com. Dates on rollouts, if you didn't hear that, we're looking towards the end of March. So stay, stu stay tuned for that information coming. Don't forget to, uh, if you want to receive emails, go on to our website and you can uh, automatically sign up on the front page to receive our emails, and I'll be sending out that information shortly. All right, guys, take care.